So let's make this an independent model. We don't want this to be reapplied to all those other. I'm going to just hit this, which is going to break it and make it unique. Grab the leg off this and bring it out to the front row here. This next step I'm going to do is going to create the um, the railing which will circumvent the entire thing here. Let's go ahead and detach this line. Make it unique. Grab this and center to the object. We want our pivot point to be right on this line so let's um, snap it down in the y-axis. Now what we're going to do is open up our spacing tool again with shift I and hit pick path. And then we're going to pick this line. As you can see, it um, it moves all those lines over this path. And we can select how many we want in the count if you have a good idea of uh, moving it around that way. Or I prefer to just hit spacing. I know that I want 5 feet and 9 inches between each one of these posts, so I'm just going to type in 5 foot 9 inches. If you want to start offset or a stop end offset, you can do that, and we always want to make it instance. Hit apply. From there, if I was going to be making the front railing and I wanted it to circle all the way around, I would simply take this, move it up, Uh, let's do that without the sub-object selected. Move it up, turn this on, and suddenly we've got a rail which goes all the way around our stadium. Quick and easy. Alright, so now that we're done with our railings, let's go ahead and work on our bleachers. I'm going to create a box that goes for the entire length of the stadium, and then I'm going to change its attributes so that it's four f width segments, this length segment is correct, but I'm going to change the width segment to 10 inches and the height segment to 2 inches. When we're working, we really want our bleacher to come to the end here and then raise up to reach um, where the person would be sitting naturally. So just to quickly find that out, I'm going to go in here and make a biped. Again, I want to make it about 5 foot 6 so that it's in relation to what I'm used to seeing the world as. And then I'm going to rotate it. Select the legs, put them to a sitting position. You'll notice if you have both legs selected, then they'll both rotate. You can do that quickly. Put the feet on the ground. And uh, the legs aren't entirely straight. Let's move them down a bit. Bring the biped up, and let's bring the bleacher up to about here. Good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create it to editable poly, and move these two polygons out to about here. Let's grab this face and chamfer it using Control shift c and bring it out almost to the edge there. Now when I was looking at the bleachers in my reference, I noticed that there was a little bit of a bump here, so that's why I'm doing this. If we hit Control alt q which we previously assigned, then that will take off our edged faces mode, and that'll allow us to see what it looks like. This is kind of an extreme dip, so I'm going to take the polygon smoothing off here, and as you can see, that gives it a much more distinct lip. Let's go ahead and create end caps for this now. I'm going to go in and delete what we have. And bring this edge over. I want this one. And I'm going to weld that edge. We do that with target weld, which I have assigned to control shift W, and weld it to this edge right here. So that's going to cre create that. Let's grab our border tool, bring this 
out a bit and then bring it in just to make sure that we copied it and scale it up. Now in our side view we can see much more clearly how the scale is going. So let's bring it in X a bit here, bring it down just to make sure that it's even, and then bring it out a bit more. One thing that this can, is going to do is it's going to create extra polygons that aren't necessary. So I'm going to go in here and Control shift w target weld these polygons over to here. We want to be very conscious of our poly count the entire process of modeling and make sure that we're not creating anything unnecessarily. So let's take our border tool and select this edge face here. As you can see, it goes all the way around, and there's extra polys under here, but that doesn't matter too much because we're going to delete our bottom faces. And I'm going to hit Control-Alt-Shift-C. That's a hotkey I made while I was doing a previous video, which didn't work, but I'm just going to show you how to access that. We go to Cap. We want Cap Poly, and I assigned it right there. So the next step is to go in here and delete our bottom faces. The reason for doing this is that I don't really need them. The camera isn't going to see them, and if we can save any polys, we want to do that. Let's zoom into our cat face that we made right here, and take off our edge. As you can see, this creates a really hard line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two, hit Alt-L, which will loop, Sometimes it doesn't work. It didn't in this case, so I'm just going to have to go in and manually select them. And then we're going to hit Control shift c for chamfer, and chamfer these edges a little bit. Now if we look at this again, that looks a lot better. We can make it look a little bit better, though, if we go in and add a smoothing group of two to this part. I'm hitting Control i for invert clear all, and I'm going to add one to here. We previously took the smoothing group off, so I'm going to do that again. So now we have a much more recognizable bleacher look. This is creating a little bit of an edge here, so I'm just going to play around and take it smoothing group off here and see if that looks any better. I think I liked it with the smoothing on, so I'll turn that back on. But right now we have our cap. Now it's moving over the edge of this lip here a little bit, so I'm going to take it in with our snap tool. We want to make sure to be moving in only one axis, so I have um, shift snap on. And the next step is going to be to make our slices. So now I'm going to go in, control A, and I'm going to start making quick slices, which I access through shift Control q and I'm going to slice along the edge of these aisles here. I'll pause the video while I do that. Now that that's all finished, I'm going to go in here and delete my aisle sections. Oh, we don't really need that biped guy watching the non-existent game. And then I'm going to take my end cap and bring it up to the edge of this aisle. Let's just go ahead and shift drag this up and attach it to this edge. Now we want to go into our vertex mode, select all of this, and hit weld. One way to double check that it was all welded properly is, is to go into our border tool and marquee drag over. The fact that nothing is selected means that all vertices welded properly. We want to drag this up and do this to the rest of the end caps. When we start doing it to the other side, we're going to want to drag it down, go into rotate mode, type into our z-axis 180 degrees, and bring it down, doing it to this side as well. Let's just take off our edge uh, constraint so that it's going to snap to wherever I tell it to. And grab this corner here and snap it to this corner just to make sure we're in proper alignment. Now again, we drag here, weld. Make sure every time you do this, 
turning edge constraint back on, that we bring it down to here and up to here. We don't want any overhang. I'm going to pause the video while I complete the end of this. Alright, now that that's finished, let's go to front view. And we'll rename our bleacher. And I'm going to create a plane. We're going to make sure it snaps from the front of the rise and run to the back of the bleacher. And then we'll attach the two. Now I'm going to move this down to the first row. And then shift drag it up. Using the technique we talked about earlier, let's put in 33 because we know that's how many bleachers we need. Make sure this is set to instance and then the namespace is correct. And then hit OK. As you can see, our bleachers are now populated. At this point, we need to go in and delete our placer object. The back row is really going to be the one that indicates how far we can go. So I'm going to just bring this forward a little bit on the element level. Because we're manipulating the individual polygons as opposed to the object itself, all of these objects are going to be affected equally. Now let's go out and look at our model a little bit. As you can see, the front set of rows look good, but as we start getting further back, the aisles need to be adjusted. At this point, we need to decide which rows of bleachers need to be independent and which rows should be instanced. I'm going to start on these first three. These obviously need to come in to match this, so let's go in and hit Make Unique. It's going to prompt if we want to make the selected items unique with respect to each other, and we're going to say no, because I want all of these to still be instanced. So now I'm going to go in. I just need to grab the polygons on one of them. And I'm going to bring them in. As you can see, these three remain instanced to each other, even if they are now independent to the rest of the scene. So let's go through the rest of the scene. I'm going to pause for a minute, as the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So now you can see we've got all of our bleachers set. One quick and easy way to double check this is to just select all of our bleachers and select, just change the color. Let's change it to just a darker blue so that it's nothing obnoxious. Now we can very easily differentiate everything and just scan over and make sure that yes, it's all working properly. The dual bonus to this is that we can now select by color, which I'm going to assign to a hotkey. Select by color. Let's make that Control Shift S. Now, if I hit Control Shift S, it'll bring up this marquee. At which point, uh, you can see that I selected light blue on accident, and it selected everything that was light blue. If I wanted to freeze that, and then go in and Control Shift S and select our bleachers, we can easily select all of them. It's an it's an easy way to group things, and a technique I usually use. That concludes section 3. I'm going to utilize the techniques I previously spoke about to finish modeling the rails and the bleachers, and I will see you again for section 4.